everybody or to my invisible followers out there right now. Seven seconds in. Um, you guys know how I roll. I just go straight into what I'm at. But I'm going to share this first. So there's been a few of you that have Um, there's been a few of you that I have shared my January with, not everybody, but, um, I had a month full of anxiety, almost a month. Um, it was not fun. <laughs> it was not, uh, hey, Kayla, yay. All right. I've got two of you on. So it was definitely not fun. Um, for those of you who know me well, for those of you who don't, I am a professional psychic intuitive, medium, tarot reader, NLP practitioner, holistic healer, you add it, bruja, whatever. Um, I've been doing this for about 10 years plus now, and uh, anxiety is not something that I'm familiar with. Anxiety is one of those sensations that, yes, I've had a few panic attacks, three to be exact. I can tell you when, where who I was with when I had these, but anxiety is not something that I'm used to. So when clients would used to come to me and tell me that they had anxiety, I couldn't exactly relate to them until I started uh, feeling sorts of ways. Now, as an empath, a lot of empathics, um, people who feel things, everybody's empathic. It's just some of us are more than others. Um, we tend to feel the energy in the room, and then we ourselves are, if we know how to guard ourselves, okay? You know, moving on to the anxiety level. So the month of January, New Year started off great. Um, spent it with a friend under the table. That's a whole other conversation, but we had a really good time. And the next day, um, a, a beloved, very beloved spiritual sister of mine, I found out passed away, okay? So I almost kind of feel like this was the trigger for my anxiety. On the third, um, I went ahead and wrote about it. And then that same weekend, I was gonna go out to Reno. And all of a sudden, um, it's, it's, it's interesting because right now my throat is tensing up, my chest is caving in, like I'm getting all these sensations again of what I was going through back then. So don't mind me if I get emotional because that's everything that I went through when having these anxiety uh, episodes. So I know that that's what I'm channeling through right now. Um, so she passed away. I went ahead and wrote about it and I realized a whole bunch of things that I hadn't wrote since Adonis had left. Um, so I had also let that go for about a year. So I put myself in observation mode and I said, you know, what's going on with me? I was going to Reno that weekend. So I went ahead, showed up to the airport not as early as I'm normally used to because I have that pre-check, but I got there with plenty of time and I had just told the girls I was with that I had, you know, some anxiety showing up, like things I wasn't used to. And all of a sudden they get on the speaker and I had told them, you know, if we don't make this flight or if something happens, I'm just not going because I'm not supposed to be there. <laughs> Maybe 10 minutes later, the girl gets on the speakerphone and is like, by the way, we don't have a pilot. There's a crew and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, long story short, I had to really bring all of it in because the last time I ignored a sign like a pilot not showing up, it got me into an interesting relationship that I learned a lot from. But anyway, we're not going to talk about that. But the anxiety levels were there. By the time we got on the flight that took us out to Reno, I passed out on the flight, which is normal. I sleep on planes. But I get to Reno and there's just still this level of anxiety. There's still this this level of, I don't know what's about to happen, but I feel like something's gonna happen. I just went with it, rinsed off, shower, got ready. Had the time of my life in Reno, it was such a good time. On the way back, everything's great. But then I kept waking up with this fear, with this, what is gonna happen? What is happening? Everything's unknown. Um, my hands were clammy, my feet were cold. I had this, 
this pressure in my chest. My throat was like always locked up. I couldn't express myself. I felt like I couldn't express myself. And this deep desire to cry every morning when I was waking up. And I was like, what is happening to me? Okay. Oh, yay, Marlene. Yes, you did. <laughs> so I was started questioning, like, what is going on with me? This is not something that I'm used to. This is definitely not something that I associate with. So let's go into what anxiety means. Uh, I went ahead and just pulled it up and there's symptoms and then there's signs and all this other stuff. So the definition of anxiety is a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease, typically about the imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. Desire to do something, typically accompanied by unease. Um, the psychiatric definition is a nervous disorder characterized by a state of excessive uneasiness and apprehension, typically with compulsive behavior or panic attack. So, so this is why I mentioned, I can, I remember the panic attacks that I've had, that there's been three and very, very specific. Now, um, the reason I sent out that cryptic story the other day about nobody's going to escape what's happening next is because I realized that these last few years I've been working in the future. I tend to go through a lot of what the collective is going to go through before it actually starts happening. So. I realized that I had gotten COVID before we knew it was COVID and I was sick for so long and all these things and all just a bunch of things started to make sense. So if any of you have been feeling anxiety, welcome. <laughs> welcome to my world of January. Um, it's until about the 20th or the 21st when I finally like, if I, I finally woke up feeling better, finally feeling more like myself. However, the reason for this is I want to kind of share with you guys what's about to happen and why somebody's going to escape this and why some of you have been feeling more anxious than normal. Um, well, as I sat with it, um, I realized that I was doing a lot of inner child work. I was doing a lot of shadow work. That's why I posted the link to the shadow work, um, what it was and how to do it and all that. Okay. Um, because what's about to happen is everybody is about to go through a uh, dark night if you guys haven't been going through that the last two years in the dark night of the soul is is when you feel like everything is going wrong or you feel like nothing is right or where you feel like your spiritual evolution is like on your back and now pushing you okay where there's no way out or where there's no other way but to move forward in whatever it is that's calling to you okay so um what I want to do is, is share what I did um, to kind of figure out what was happening with me because anxiety, like I said, it's definitely not one of those sensations that I associate with. Now I can, and Jesus, does it feel like you're dying every day? <laughs> um, so one of the very first things is self-awareness. So self-awareness is key when figuring out and healing, okay? Um, anytime you want to shift something in your life or transform something in your life or change something in your life, you want to be aware of what it is first. So part of the key is self-awareness. So let me give you the definition of self-awareness. It's a conscious knowing of one's own character, feelings, motives, and desires. Okay. So that is what self-awareness is. And the very first step in any kind of shift is knowing that you do something, knowing that you either don't like it or you do getting to know yourself at a deeper level. Okay. Um, the second thing is when I was going through these anxiety episodes is I would go through my physiological needs, you know, they're, they're, uh, humans need others. There's physiological needs that we all need, right? We need comfort. We need shelter. We need food. We need, uh, sleep. We need, uh, intimacy. We need touch. We need, um, there's about, I think eight is what I researched. Um, so I went down the line of, am I safe? Am I in danger? Um, so I could start calming what was going on in my mind, which was what the hell is happening with my body? I feel like I'm gonna die. I feel like I'm gonna have a heart attack. I feel like all these things started racing through my head, especially that day at the airport. Um, for the girls who were with me, I'm sorry, you probably felt my anxiety. And I was telling everybody else's that was amplified in me. Um, however, I started having to knock every single one of those needs out. Um, did I eat? Am I hungry? Do I need sleep? Um, 
It looks like my connection's unstable. Mm -hmm. Let me know if you guys can still hear and see me. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so once I went through all of that um, temperature control, I started getting really cold and my hands get clammy. So I would go put on another sweater. So I started paying attention to what were my needs at the moment? Is anything ha ha happening? Can you go, okay, perfect. So what is happening? Is my safety, in, is my life in danger? So I had to go through all these like mental checklists, right? I'm like, okay, do I need affection? Do I need to call someone? Do I, what is I have? So I just let it come up. Mind you, I do work, um, from home so I don't have an environment where I need to check my emotions all the time. So if I need to cry, I just cry. Um, luckily I have that, um, that privilege here working from home now. So what I did is I sat down and I allowed myself to cry and I allowed whatever emotion to come up to come up. And then I went even deeper. So I said, you know, where is this coming from? How am I feeling? Why am I feeling this? Uh, actually the why wasn't important. I uh, actually, the why wasn't important. I kind of nixed that one. I pretty much nixed the why. I went into more so an interrogation of what is showing up and what do I need to allow myself to feel in order to get over this anxiety or this panic attack or whatever was happening. And I started to write. And it's interesting the things that came up. Um, because I have been doing a lot of self-work. Like I said, I've been in observation most of the year. So a lot of you haven't seen my face unless you came personally or had a call with me. Um, even dancing, I have been going out to different states, but not here locally now. Um, but you allow the feeling to show up and you let it speak to you. A lot of us think that we don't get intuitive hits. That's not true. We get intuitive hits all the time. And I went ahead and started writing out all of these things that started showing up. Uh, my lack of vulnerability, my uh, being afraid of intimacy, my being afraid of relationships, my being afraid of wanting to love again or being loved. So, yes, I'm being very, very vulnerable right now, vulnerable now. You're going to have to start doing the work, uh, whether you like it or not. Um, for those of us who have ran from, let's just say some kind of traumatic event, maybe you were raped, maybe um, someone took your child away, maybe, um, maybe you were the aggressor, maybe you were the one who offended someone, and those things are coming back up for you. Um, the only way that we're going to be able to move forward is by doing the shadow work or by doing that work that isn't so pretty, by admitting to yourself that either you were wrong or you've been wrong and getting it out of your system. So um, I used to be on a team and I used to dance all the time and that's the way I used to get my energy out all now whenever I go out dancing. Now, the activity that I do now I do is writing a lot, okay? So forgiveness letters, um, I've been reading a book on healing inner child, which is called Homecoming um, by John Bradshaw. There's another book called How to Do the Work. Um, there's another one by Carolyn Leaf called um, Cleaning Up Your Mental, um, Mental, Cleaning Up Your Mental something. I forgot the name. But so I've been doing a lot of reading, you guys, and, and, and doing the exercises in the books have helped me a lot to get through those things. And realize that when I say uh, when I say that nobody's going to be able to get be able to avoid this, I'm serious. If you guys have been avoiding certain trauma in your life, I highly suggest that you guys start going to therapy or find a therapist or find someone who's going to assist you through this next part of your evolution, because we're all about to go through it, all of us. Even me, that I'm over here, a spiritual healer, blah, blah, you know. Um, my relationships started to come up. My, my, the things that I have been avoiding for the last four years started to come up. Who I want to be in a relationship, how I want to show up in a relationship. Now, I'm talking about myself. These might be different for you. 
these might be family related towards you. This might be a trauma of some kind of violence towards you. It might be a murder of a friend. It might be a um, having to forgive someone that you're not ready to see yet. Now, I'm not saying forgiveness for them. It's for you. It's for you to release yourself from that gel cell of, of your own thoughts, okay? Um, it might be time to tell a new story from stop being the victim um, and, and be the victor in your, um, in your story. Um, so allow them to surface, allow these feelings to surface and then go deeper and burn them. Burn, burn whatever it is that you write. I always say that's a, it's a very easy way to transmit energy. Um, are you increasing the pleasure to avoid the pain? Are you drinking more? Are you going out more? Are you trying to avoid something that keeps coming up? Because what I noticed is after I came back from Reno, boy, I was getting high every day for about a week. Every day. So that was me avoiding whatever was coming up. And now mind you, it helped with the anxiety because it like leveled me. It, me. it like really just like took me from a, a high level of just like what's happening and, the, and like some kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop, which I mean, mind you, my plumbing went out and all kinds of fun stuff at the house happened. Um, but again, energy moves the way it needs to. And when you're not moving the way you need to, the energy will find a way to move itself, whether it's through your plumbing, whether it's through your tires, whether it's through the engine in your car, the car gets the gasket, something will blow out in your energy when you need to move more energy than what you have been because you've been avoiding the pain and running towards pleasure. So do you guys have any questions? This is what I wanted to get out is that anxiety that you guys are feeling or have been feeling is because it's at a collective level. It's not just you. Um, we just went through a Mercury retrograde. We just went through a Venus retrograde. Um, those two together cause a lot of relationship strain. And if your relationship made it through this time, congratulations. <laughs> if it didn't, be okay with letting it go. Be, be okay with knowing that um, those people that we bring into our lives are, are just a reflection of us. Um, even though for a really long time, this last relationship that I brought in, I keep saying no fucking way. Oops, excuse me. Uh, I've been trying to curse less, by the way, you guys. Um, there's no way I brought it in, but then I realized what vibration I was at when I did bring it in. I was upset and mad and ugh. So if you guys don't have any questions, um, there are a few um, writing assignments that I can hand over. Um, I give these to my clients. Uh, forgiveness letters is one of them. The what if scenario is the new one that I I don't know who I got it from. I'm sure it's from a book. None of my work uh, that I assign, the majority of it, I can't say none of it. The majority of it is not original because we all come from one mind um, and it's channeled through a lot of places. So um, can I put post the book titles as well? Yes, I can post the book titles. Uh, there's actually been a lot of book titles that, that have helped me tremendously. And I am very, um, the one by Carolyn Leaf is called Cleaning Up Your Mental Mess. Um, Homecoming, Championing Your Inner Child by John Bradshaw is the other. Um, I read another one named Brown, which was Dare to Lead. That one taught me a lot on vulnerability. Um, and then also looking into my human design, looking into my astrology, but that's, yes. Give us homework, I need it, all right. Uh, I will definitely be doing that. Um, I'm hoping you guys enjoyed seeing my lovely face after all these years. Um, a lot of you gave me really good ideas. I'm going to definitely be on here more often um, because I realize this isn't about me. This is about you guys. This is about getting that information out to you guys regardless of whether I end up being wrong or right. Um, this is going to help somebody. And as long as that message gets out there to that person, I've done my part in helping the collective and helping humanity. So you will start seeing myself uh, a little bit more often. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this live. Um, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.